Welcome to our 2020 Stanley Cup Playoff Prediction and Previews. Oh wait, I forgot my bracket. Where's my bracket sheet? Oh no, I forgot my bracket. There it is. Okay, now we're ready. I should have started recording later. Okay. So today is the first day of our Stanley Cup playoff previews. Yesterday we had our full predictions, if you had listened to that. Thank you very much for doing that. And today, Monday, July the 27th, we will be doing the first two series from the eastern side of the play-in tournament. Note that we will not be predicting anything with the eight seeded teams already in the middle, as you see on the screen. Today, in this video, we'll be previewing Toronto and Columbus. Right now, it's 7.30 a.m. when this is premiering, and at 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be previewing the next series, which will be Pittsburgh and Montreal. Okay, so let's get started here without further ado. But before that, tomorrow we will be doing the Islanders and the Panthers and the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Wednesday, Calgary Jets, Oilers, Blackhawks. On, finally on Thursday, Canucks Wild and Nashville, Arizona. Okay, without further ado, let's really get started for real. With the first series right here, Toronto against Columbus, the 8th and the ninth seeds. This is a very special playoff format in that there are 24 teams, and this is a best of five series. So I'm very excited for this. It's going to be great. Oops, I pressed the wrong button there. See, look at these technical difficulties, hmm? Google Slides, you know? Okay. Anyway, Toronto and Columbus. Game 1 will be on Sunday, August the 2nd in Toronto. So Toronto does have the advantage in that sense, but still... I don't know about that. These teams are at equal points here with 81 points. Blue Jackets are 33, 22, and 15 in that they've lost more games than they've won in total. The Leafs are 36, 25, and 9. Okay, so this top six forwards the Maple Leafs include William Nylander, Austin Matthews, Zach Hyman, Mikiev, Tavares and Marner. This is a very good offensive squad. As you saw, Matthews had 47 goals. Nylander had 31 and Tavares had 26. These two lines are very dangerous. I've got to say, very dangerous. However, as you've may have noticed from the news, Matthews did test positive for COVID-19, which means that, unfortunately, Austin Matthews, I don't know if he'll be back in time on August the 2nd. Let's assume he is. The defense for the Maple Leafs, Muzzin, Hall, Riley, and Cece, pretty good right there. The goaltending is the biggest question. We have right here Muslim Hall, Riley, and CC. We have Anderson and Campbell in the goaltending position. Anderson is 29, 13, and 7. However, he is 2.85 goals in the establishment and a 909 save percentage. Jack Campbell is 11, 12, and 3, 2.8, 904. As you see, the numbers are a little low for the Maple Leafs. You do see Anderson being 29, 13, and 7, and that's okay, but even so, the numbers say percentage a little low there. As, you, as I've said, Toronto's offense is very, very potent, and that's why their power play is 6th in the league. Their penalty killing, as I've said, their lack of defense, and their goaltending 
Makes it a little bit worse for wear. 21st in the league. The season series was 1 to 1, 7 to 5 goals scored in favor of Toronto. For Columbus, 33, 22, and 15. Their top six forwards are Texier, Dubois, Bjorkstrand, Nyquist, Wenberg, and Atkinson. This is a very low scoring squad. They only have 125 goals compared to Toronto's 158. The Blue Jackets shoot a lot. However, converting was the issue for this, this squad. If Toronto can overcome Columbus with their offense, they will maybe win this, but the Columbus Blue Jackets have very good defensemen and pretty good goaltending as well. They have Wierenski, Jones, Gavrikov, and Savard. Goaltending versus Leakins, 923 save percentage, 2.35 goals on the average. One of the best goaltenders that kind of gave Columbus their points after their fallout in the second half. Corpus Salo was actually pretty good as well. With a 9-11 save percentage and 2.6 goals in this average. This pause can allow the Blue Jackets to get healthy again as they lost 352 games lost to injury. They led the NHL in man games lost. They have dealt with the loss of Panarin and Bobrovsky pretty well, I would say. They didn't lose faith in their ability and they persisted. But can Josh Anderson come back from the summer? It was at a four to six month recovery period. I don't know. Maybe he'll be back. Blue Jackets have played very, very, I would say, persistently. They fight, fought for a playoff spot. They lost the two biggest stars in the summer, but they persisted and they were in the playoff hunt before the pause. In that way, if the Maple Leafs do win this, they will face the Bruins for the third straight season and we all know how much fans would like to see that. However, because of the chip on the shoulder for the Columbus Blue Jackets and the bumbling defense and goaltending from the Maple Leafs, I will give the edge here, shockingly, to the Blue Jackets in four games. I just can't see how Merzlikens and Corpus Salo can not stop everything. They're very good goaltenders. They allow the Blue Jackets with their poor offense to save them with solid defense. But we will see, won't we? Alright, stay tuned for 3 p.m. Pacific time where we will go over the next series, Pittsburgh and Montreal. But before then, thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. And as always, it is time for us to go see you guys. We'll see you guys later today and have a great rest of your week.